So a few weeks ago, I switched from using my own customized GNU Emacs configuration. I switched back to using Doom Emacs. I had used Doom Emacs years ago in the past. And, you know, coming back to it, I've got to say, I'm enjoying my time using Doom Emacs, but I need to spend some time configuring it a little more. So today, I'm going to dive into the configuration file, and we're going to play around a little bit. So let me go ahead and launch Doom Emacs. Remember, on the last video I did, we did some basic customization. One of the first things I did was I didn't need to see the Doom Emacs dashboard. Doom Emacs has a custom dashboard that is the initial buffer when you launch it. It just shows you a few basic key bindings. But if you already know those key bindings, the dashboard really doesn't do much for you. So for my custom config, what I've done is I've set the E shell as the initial buffer choice because I think this is much more useful as a first buffer. Now, if I do space FR for find recent files and I do a search for my config.org, uh, there is my config and this is exactly how I left it on the last video. So you can see there's not much to this config. I've barely touched it because honestly the default settings with Doom Emacs are pretty good. I didn't need to do much customization. The only thing that I absolutely had to do, I had to change the default font size. It was a little small for me. Other than that, I played around with some org settings. That way I got bigger headers for our org documents. So, for example, if I want, you know, a second level header, you can see that is two and that would be three. Well, if I add a, another asterisk, you can see each header is a, a different size. This is org level three here and you can see its height is 1.4 so it's 40 percent bigger than your standard font size and this one is 1.5 it's 50 percent bigger than the standard font size and then the top level header is 1.6 it's 60 percent bigger than your standard font size now for me i do almost everything in org mode as far as if i'm writing a document i'm almost always going to write it in org mode but i know a lot of people are rather heavily invested in markdown and if i open a second window here so let me actually do a space period for the find file command and by default it's in my home directory i have this example markdown file so it just gives you an example of you know the various headings and markdown and you know some other stuff so you can see bold and italics and everything but Markdown does not get the same treatment in Emacs as org mode as far as it doesn't look as good, right? You don't have the pretty bullets. You don't have the uh, the variable font size headers. Well, you can actually set some of that if you want to. For me, I do want the variable font size uh, and the headers. So let's go ahead and adjust our config. So let me undo what I had done previously. And let's add a new top level header. I'm going to call this Markdown. Let's create a source code block. It, of course, it needs to be Emacs Lisp for the language. And then I'm going to paste this block of code here rather than writing it out. So that way you guys don't have to watch me write all of this out. But it is very similar to what we did here for setting these um, font faces in org mode. You got the various org level one org level two here in markdown you have markdown header face one markdown header face two and again i set them to the appropriate size i basically did them essentially the same as org where i did uh the top level the very top level header will be 60 percent bigger so 1.6 and then the second level header, 1.5, 50% bigger, yada, yada, yada. And let me go ahead and write that. And I could reload my config, but one thing I could do, and one thing you can always do in Emacs, if you want to immediately evaluate a block of Emacs Lisp code, you could select it, and then you could do meta X. And what you want to do is you want to eval region. If I can type correctly, the microphone is kind of in the way here. Let me just actually switch over there. Now I can actually see the window here. All right, yeah, eval region. And if I do that, it evaluated that block of code, meaning it just changed in place uh, this markdown file. You can see now the headers are the appropriate size. Now I still don't get like fancy bullets and stuff here in markdown mode the way I get these in org mode. But one thing you can do is if you actually want to just read a markdown document without all of the hashtags and everything what you could do instead of the default markdown mode which is what you're in in a markdown document 
by default. There is a special mode called Markdown View mode that you could get into. And then it gets rid of all those uh, hashtags, those pound symbols, and now you get a much cleaner way to actually read the document. Now, if you wanted to edit the document, it's very difficult to edit the document without being able to see all those pound symbols. So you, to get back into it, you would actually want to switch back down into the regular markdown mode rather than the markdown view mode. Ideally, what I would like to do, I would like to set a key binding. That way I could just have a key binding that toggles me in markdown mode or markdown view mode, depending on which one I'm already in. So I think we could create a custom function for that. So underneath the source code block, let's do another source code block, Emacs Lisp once again. And I probably need to add some headers since it's two different source code blocks because, you know, I want to make sure that people know that this is uh, setting the... Uh, headers and this one if I go down here we'll create a second level header here and this will be a toggle markdown view and this will be a rather simple custom function I, if you're brand new to Emacs Lisp creating your own custom functions are not that complicated especially something as simple as this one this is basically going to execute a command it's going to execute markdown view mode if I'm already in markdown mode so that's toggling markdown view on but if I'm already in markdown view mode already then hitting that same function well, would put me back into the regular markdown mode I hope that makes sense and here is what the code would look like um, and this is something if you needed help with this you could always ask uh, chat GPT or Gemini to create a simple little Emacs Lisp function because again this is not terribly complicated let me zoom in a little bit the very first thing you need to do when you create a Emacs function is you need to define so define a function and then you need to give it a name and in my case, because it's a custom function, I added the prefix DT. So why did I add a prefix to this custom function? It's because when it's a custom function, you want people to know that use your config that, hey, that is a custom function. So when they run the command prefix slash, in this case, DT slash, they know that's not a built-in Emacs function. That's a custom function. So I titled this function DT slash toggle dash markdown dash view dash mode and you're going to use dashes when you're naming functions in Emacs. You use dashes. You don't ever use underscores. You keep everything lowercase as well. And then after the function name, you do an opening and closing parentheses here. And then the next part of the define block here is you need to give it a description. The description is what will appear when you do uh, any kind of documentation or if, uh, which key uh, shows the command or meta X when it shows the command. You know, it always gives a description of what these commands do. So in this custom function, the description is I want you to toggle between markdown mode and markdown view mode and then interactive interactive means that it will be a function that when you do meta x it will be in here so that's what interactive does and then finally we have an if statement if the major mode we're in is markdown view mode then we go to markdown mode otherwise go to markdown view mode and let's see if this block of code works so once again I'll select the block of code and let's do a eval region here if I can type correctly and now that that has been evaluated, if I go back over here into the actual markdown document, I do meta x. Remember what my function was named, dt slash, and there it is, toggle dash markdown dash view dash mode. If I hit enter, we immediately switch from markdown mode to markdown view mode. And meta x dt, uh, the custom function again, switches us back into regular markdown mode. So this is working as expected. Now, because this document, you know, I'm going to share it on my GitLab. People will view it. People brand new to Emacs, people brand new, especially to Doom Emacs. I am actually going to leave some comments in the document. So, you know, I'm going to leave a description exactly what this custom function is, how custom functions typically are named. They're, again, name is typically prefix slash name of function. And then I mentioned that in this document, any custom function that I create, I'm always going to prefix it with DT. I should also probably go ahead and document this too. I'll leave a comment right above the header block. That way people know what I'm doing in this code. Because even though, you know, I, it, you might think it's obvious we're setting markdown header face one, people may have no idea what that means. So I'm letting people know I'm making the markdown headers 
variable font sizes. Now I don't want to have to do my custom function by doing meta x and then searching for dt slash toggle markdown view mode. I would like that to have a key binding set to it. So let's actually, you know, I'm going to have to set a ton of key bindings at some point. So for me, I think we should actually have just a key binding section. So let's keep the headers in alphabetical order. So doom settings is D, M is markdown. Let's do key bindings right here. And we're going to have some blocks of code, obviously. So let's do Emacs Lisp. And let me actually search the document. I think I already gave one example key binding. Yes, I did. This right here. So that is the comment line function. Remember, I set that to space dash. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to move that up here because that's where it now belongs in the key binding section. And we'll just have a second level header about comment line so we know that's where that key binding went, but I'm going to have a bunch of other key bindings that are more related, and I'm going to call these the toggle bindings. So these are going to be all the functions that toggle on and off certain things. So the way you set these key bindings in Doom Emacs is inside the code block here, you do uh, map exclamation and then colon leader. Colon leader is the leader key, which is space by default in Doom Emacs, so the space key. And then you give it another key to hit. In this case, I did dash, so space dash. What does it do? It runs this function, comment dash line. Uh, and then you need to give it a description. That way, which key, you know, will give you a description. So colon D-E-S-C comment line. That's actually the description when you do which key. So if I do space and just let it sit there for a second, and if I search for the dash, you can see space dash. What does it do? It's comment line. So that's the description I gave it. And if I hit the dash, it will actually run the function comment dash line. Well, I'm going to go ahead and paste a block of code here for various toggle related key bindings. So uh, what this does is uh, it's very similar, but I did these all in one big block instead of having map, you know, this key binding and then another map, this key binding. You do map exclamation colon leader and then this block here prefix, which I didn't use prefix up here because it was just space dash. But these are going to be space T for toggle and then a third key. So the prefix is T for toggle and you have to give it a description toggle because which key will need to know a description. And then the same kind of format. Uh, I give functions and then what the key binding does. Let me make this full screen so you can see. You can see space T L will run the command doom slash toggle line numbers. So that's a custom doom function and they use doom as their prefix for their custom function. So it toggles line numbers. So if I do, oh well, I actually have got to actually evaluate this. So let's select the region and then meta x eval region again. And now it should have evaluated that block of code. So space T L toggles the line numbers so so space tl turns line numbers off well actually it didn't let's try that again space tl a second time turns them off space tl turns it back on space tl turns it back off what, what, what's going on there uh, you have to do it a second time uh, it cycles through uh, you guys see what that is doing this is their custom uh function here for toggle line numbers so right now we get this version of the line numbers where the highlighted line tells me what line I'm on. And then visually, I can see one line above, two lines above, three, you know, get one through eight above and then one through infinity down below. Space TL turns it completely off. Space TL turns it back into a more traditional format where it's the actual line numbers rather than relative uh, distance from where you're at. So that is kind of interesting. I like that. Then I also wanted the ability to have uh, terminal splits. Sometimes I want an eShell, but I don't want eShell in this frame that I'm in. I want it in a split. So I added space TE for eShell toggle. So let's try that space TE toggles a E shell split if I hit escape to get into normal mode and then space T E gets me out of that split. I've got some other splits here as well. Space T V toggles a V term split. So space T V gets me a standard V term, which is a standard terminal emulator that's actually running uh, the bash shell probably by default. I will eventually set that to run fish as my default shell, but space TV toggles the V term back off. I've got some 
truncated lines uh, functions here, space TT for toggle off truncated lines. And now you can see this line here just goes off the side of the screen if I move my head, right? Space TT toggles truncated lines back on. And now you can see the line actually wraps the way you would expect. Now with the terminals, I mentioned that I wanted E shell and V term in splits. So that's these functions, E shell slash toggle, V term slash toggle. But there are also functions for having E shell and V term appear in the frame you're already in. And that's E shell slash here and V term slash here. And I do these with a capital T prefix. So space capital T E just takes me to e shell in the frame I was already in. Let me escape out of that. Space BK for buffer kill. But what I was really trying to do here was to add a key binding for my custom toggle markdown view mode. So I've already added that. Space TM for toggle markdown view mode, right? So let's see if that actually works. So in this document here, space TM gets me into markdown view mode. Space TM gets me back into regular markdown mode. So I think we've done quite a bit of customization here in the last few minutes. Let's actually clean up the config here. I'm going to zoom out so I can actually see everything. You can see we've got the table of contents. So let's clean this up a little bit. So there was some random stuff here at the end, other stuff where we set display line numbers and all of that. I think I'm going to give this a more descriptive header. So let's get rid of that. And instead of other stuff, what these last settings are. I think we'll call this sensible defaults because this is really what these are, is setting the uh, confirm kill Emacs. So no answering yes or no when I kill a window. So we've turned that off. Uh, initial buffer choice, we've already added E shell. And then we want to display line numbers always as true. I always want line numbers turned on. And I could add comments out to the side here. So, you know, this is turn line numbers on and then if I go down here we can add another comment and Emacs Lisp comments start with two semicolons so this is a don't confirm on exit and then two more semicolons and then a shell is initial buffer I really don't need the periods at the end of those sentences and because I just did a colon W to write to the document, you can see the table of contents immediately changed. It added all our new headers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push this latest version of my Doom Emacs config over to my GitLab. I'll go ahead and push this. You guys will find a link to my .files repository in the show description. It's my .files repo that will contain my latest Doom Emacs config. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt Steve, 40 millimeter Cap Caveman, Darloff Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vidor, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick episode about configuring Doom Emacs would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support my work, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.